Hello guys, it's Pete from MyJuryBench.com. Today we're going to do another YouTube subscriber request. He wants to know how to design this particular engagement ring in Blender. So today I'm going to show you how to do that using Blender 2.91. You can also use Blender 2.83 or Blender 2.90. One, all three versions will work identically. And I'm not using any add-ons to do this. We're just going to use what's built into Blender. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Let's get started. I had a request from a viewer on YouTube asking me how I would go about making this in Blender and I wanted to show you guys how to do it. So let's take a look at the sum of all the parts. We have a band which is kind of like an infinity twist band. We also have four diamonds that are marquees, probably three by one and a half millimeter ish. So we're going to take a look at making a head for that. And then we have the center stone which looks to be about a carat or you can make it whatever size you want. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to design the band, then we're going to design these little marquee heads, and then we're going to put it all together, and I'm going to show you step by step how to do that in Blender 2.91. I'm using Blender 2.91. If you're using Blender 2.83 or higher, if you migrate to 2.91, you can simply transfer over all your options. However, keep in mind certain things you'll have to upgrade uh, as far as add-ons. So I'm going to move this picture off the screen and let's get started on that band. Um, I'm going to hide my diamond. I don't need to show that right now, so let's hide that. The first thing we want to do, of course, is make this twisted band. So I am going to do that in, in basically uh, two parts using a curve, and I'll show you how we do that here. First thing I'm going to do is go to Shift A, and I'm going to add in a curve and then a circle. I'm going to size that up to approximately 17 and a half millimeters round. Let's get that to about 17 and a half right there. I'm going to hit R to rotate X along the X axis and then 90 degrees so it's like so. With that done now I've got a curve object that I can turn into a ring and what I'm going to do now is work on the design of that. I'm going to start with a very simple um, like I normally do go to my curve properties here and then I'm going to use the geometry settings and we'll just come down here and we'll hit extrude so we're going to make that a little wider and then I'm going to give it some depth just about like so just keeping this as simple as possible so here's my band It's probably a little too wide so let's just make that a little narrower uh, I don't want it too wide that looks to be good right about there Okay, so now that I have the basic shape for my ring, the next thing I want to do is go into edit mode. And you can see here I have four points that I can modify to make the shape of the ring that I want. I want to change that and I want to increase that. So with all of those selected, I'm going to right click on the model and I'm going to hit subdivide, which doubles the divisions of the curve that I can make changes to. Now with that selected, I'm going to come over here and grab the center dot on the top line. I'm going to look at this from the side view and I'm just going to move it over ever so slightly. Just about like that. Okay, now I've got this dot and this dot. Hold the shift key down and select both of those. And now I'm going to move that over just a little bit. And then just to give this less of an arch, I'm going to take this and I'm going to come over to normal. And what I want to do is basically pull that in just about like so. And it's going to be hard because I'm kind of eyeballing this. We're going to come over to this one and we're going to do the exact same thing. Grab the blue line and just move that in to about the same location. Let's go back to our global settings for our axis. And now let's look at this from the front. And you can see we still have a good circle. And from the side I have a nice curve path. It's not perfect. Let's grab that and just kind of move it over a little bit so we have a nice little arch there. And then I want to do the same to this. I'm just going to move that over so I have a nice little arch. Take a look at that from the top. And just keep that curve right about there. And that looks to be about the same on both sides. Let's go look at this from the side view. We're still looking good. Okay, so that's the way I have my curve and I'm 
pretty much like in the way that looks. If I want to just take a look at this and see what it's going to look like from a both from both pieces being together, I'm going to add in a modifier to this. We'll call it a mirror modifier. I'm going to select the Z axis and now you can see this is the basic shape of that ring. It's not quite perfect. Um, just to make some changes here, I'm going to grab the center one. I'm going to make that opening on the top just a little bit bigger to give us a little bit of interest there. Now again, I'm still uh, dealing with this wide band. It's a little wider than we have in our photo. So let me just drag our photo back. You can see it's a little narrower here. So I'm just going to grab that and on my object here, come down to my curve utilities. While you're at it, make sure you increase the resolution to 36. I'll come back down here and let's just do extrusion. We'll lower a little bit to make that just a little bit thinner. Just about like that. And that gives us a nice curved arch all the way around the ring. So far, so good. I kind of like the way that looks. And if I want to continue making changes to this, I can come over to my uh, tab key and then select, let's say, this dot here. If we look at it straight down, maybe I want to just bring that over just about like that so it's straight down. And again, on the other side, we're going to select the same and just bring that over so it's straight. And that gives us a nice straight path from the beginning of the arches all the way down to the bottom of the shank. Looks good so far. I kind of like the way that looks. Now let's go back into object mode. That being done, I'm going to get rid of that modifier that we added, the mirror modifier. And I am just going to click on that X so now it's gone. And I also want to make this uh, wrap a little bit. So how we're, how we're going to do that. So I can't really use a mirror modifier and give us an overlap. Um, what I'm going to do is select our curve. I am going to right click on it and convert it to a mesh. So now that I have the shape, I can convert it to a working mesh. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate it, press Enter, and then I'm going to hit RZ180. And there you see we have two meshes now, um, not quite blended together. And what I want to do now is take one point here, the tab key, and I am going to select this face right here with my face tool. I've got my face selected here. I'm going to grab this face right there. And I am going to come over to my proportional editing tool and I'm going to drag that up a little bit and I'm just going to increase my circle of influence just about like so. That gives me a little bit of an overlap on one side. And now let's hit the tab key and we want this brown one to overlap on, on this side. So I'm going to hit tab over here. I'm going to select this face right there and do the same thing. So now that I've got an overlap here and the purple one overlaps there. Let's go back into object mode and that looks pretty good. I think that's the look we're going for for our ring shank. Let's just double check. And if I compare the two, I think we're doing pretty good. I'm just going to zoom in to this, get it over on the side. We'll bring back our photo and let's take a look. Looks pretty good. Okay. That being said now, now I can use a Boolean modifier to add these together. So I'm going to select the first ring shank. I will select the first ring shank, hold the shift key down, select the second half, and then I'm going to go to my tools menu, or where is it here, edit menu, and then I'm going to do a union to those two. Might take a few seconds here. <clears throat> and now I have a perfectly modeled piece, all one unit that is 3D printable. Okay, so there's our ring shank, and that's pretty much done the way we want it. The next thing we have to do is make those little marquee heads. So if we look over here, what I want to do now is make four of these little marquee heads, um, one on each side of our ring shank, and you can see they're pretty much mirrored from one side to the other. So let's just move this out of the way. I'm going to take my ring shank. I'm going to come over here where it says Bezier Curve because that was what we had. And I'm going to call this Ring Shank. With the ring shank selected, I'm going to hit this little eyeball right here and turn that off so it's invisible. Now let's focus on making the little marquee heads that we have to use. So to do that, it's very, very easy. I'm going to hit Shift A. 
I'm going to in, add in a mesh and we're going to add in a cylinder. I'm going to make this um, 100 vertices and we are going to rotate this along the x-axis. So Rx90 and now we have this in that orientation. I'm going to hit SY and I'm going to make that a little bit longer. And then I'm going to size this down completely and then just make it a little wider along the y-axis, just about like so. So there is the what I'm going to call the bottom part of our marquee head. I'm going to go back into edit mode and we're going to do control R and we're going to add in a hundred loop cuts. So do that. You do that with the control R and then just increase those. You could either type in 100 or use your mouse wheel to increase those, but you want to have some good definition to this mesh. So that's selected now. Now I want to make a curve to this and I want to follow the basic shape of a marquee stone. So I'm going to use my Blender Gems tools. I'm going to come over to Diamonds. I'm going to add in a marquee stone. Hit a pen. So we import that. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. And what size is this? This is really tiny, so we're going to size this. I'm going to hit S and then I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. We're going to put this center of origin, the center of mass. And I'm going to make that, let's see here. Let's make that three and a half. Doesn't really matter. We can work with small amounts here. And I want to bring that up to about like that. And then I'm just going to size my bar down just a little bit about like this. And we're over half a millimeter, which is pretty good. Remember, always when you're considering 3D printing and casting, you always want to make sure that you're over at least half a millimeter. So I like to make things a little bit bigger because there is some shrinkage in 3D printing. So I've got this bar that we're going to use for the bottom portion of our head. And now what I want to do is hit Shift A. I'm going to add in a curve and then a circle. I'm going to rotate that, RY90, so it's rotated along the axis there. I'm going to size this up, so if we look at it from the side view, uh, you can see what I'm shooting for. And what I'm going to do now is use a curve modifier on this cylinder that we made. And I will come down to modifiers, curve modifiers, and then I'm going to select the curve object, which is our Bezier circle. Um, and we're going to change that to Y. And then I'm going to move this to the bottom, right about like so. Now I can make this a little smaller and we'll still have to move this around so that's pretty normal. And if I size that down a little bit you can see what happens. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Make that a little bigger. SY, we're just going to shrink that down, move that over. SY, make that just a little taller. I'm going to grab this and make that a little smaller. So we're just touching the, uh, the tips of the diamond. Grab that and we're just going to move that in so it's level. SY and I'm just going to play with this until I get it to about that point. <clears throat> that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to apply that curve modifier. So come over here to this little drop down arrow and you can hit apply and Blender 2.83 there is an apply button. And now this circle here, this, this cylinder that we made for the head is actually not part of this curve anymore. So now I can just kind of make that a little bit smaller and then SZ and I can bring the bottom in just like so. Bring it up to the cutlet on our diamond. Okay, so there I have the first part of our head. Our head is made up of two parts, so what I'm going to do now is take my circle. I'm going to rotate that along the y-axis, RY90, and we're going to make it flat. I'm going to look at this from the top down, and I'm going to size this to about the size of our uh, about the size of our diamond and to do that I'm going to hit SX and kind of make that somewhat of a marquee shape. It's not quite a marquee shape. I'm going to bring this up so we can see all the points on it. Look back down at it and you can see the ends are not pointed. So how do we get pointy ends on this curve? It's very very simple. 
and hit the tab key so we're in edit mode. I'm going to come over here and select this particular bar, the center one here. Then I'm going to press S and then I'm going to make that, oops, let's turn off proportional editing. Hit S and then size that down and you can see it brings our points in, our endpoints. And if I do that here, you've got this little dot here and that little dot here. We've got a nice curve. If I hit S and bring that in, it makes a point. So just about like so. With that done, now I want to give this some depth and some dimensions. So I've got my curve selected. I'm going to come over to the curve properties and I'm going to make that resolution 36 just because I want some high definition to it. I'm going to look at my extrusion. So we're going to extrude this just a little bit and then I'm going to come over to my depth and I'm going to make some depth to that. I'll lower the extrusion. We don't need it to be that bad. And that looks good. Let's bring this up a little bit, about like so. And now if I bring this down just under our marquee diamond, you can see it hugs our diamond in pretty well and it gives us that shape that we're looking for. With that done now, I can come over here, right click on this and then convert this to a mesh. Now that I've got that converted to a mesh, with that little frame selected, I can hold the shift key down, select the first part of our head, and then use the uh, union tool to join those together. So now our marquee head is just one solid piece, and our diamond, of course, is separate. If we want to take a look at what that looks like in rendered mode, yeah, you can see it looks pretty good. Let's just get rid of this here. We're going to bring back our ring shank. So there's our ring shank. And what I want to do with this is duplicate this one more time. So I'm going to hit Shift D uh, and then we're going to hit Enter. And now I've got two heads. If I bring that up, you can see here's our first head. Here is our second head. So I've got those just about where I want them. So now I just have to place those within my ring shank. To do that, let's take a look at our picture here. We want those to be one along the outer joint of both halves of that ring shank and one to be in the center of one of the bars. So I'm going to show you how to do that. That's pretty very, very easy. We're going to take this first head here. I'm going to hit RZ90. So we're going to rotate that. And I'm just going to move that into place. So I'm going to put that right over here. I'm going to bring it down just like so. And then from the side view, I'm going to hit <clears throat> R and then Y, and I'm going to rotate that along the Y axis. Now with that selected, I'm going to come over to my uh, transformation orientation. I'm going to select normal so that I can move this out. I'm just going to bring that up to about that position there. We're getting close. It's not quite exactly what I want. I'm going to size that down just a little bit because it does look a little bit on the large size. And I'm going to move that up a little bit more. RY, I'm going to rotate that along the Y axis. We're just going to move that out a little bit. And I'm just going to keep playing until I get it to about where I want it. That looks pretty good. I'm going to rotate that just a little bit more. RY, just curve that in just a little bit more. I'll bring this over so we're touching both parts of the ring shank just like that. So if I take my picture and bring that back, you can see what I've done is I've placed this particular stone right there, or the head for that stone. Okay, let's get that out of the way. And let's take a look at the second one here. We're going to grab that. We're going to bring this up. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate this along the Z-axis, RZ90. And then I'm going to size this down just a little bit. And what we want to do is place this head right about here. So with that selected, I'm going to bring that over. Let's get this over here. And then rotate it, RZ. And I'm going to make it kind of mimic the shape. Looking at this straight down, I can use the G key, kind of put it right about here. That looks good so far. But we are not aligned correct. And if we take our picture and bring that back over, you can see this is kind of sitting on top of this bar here where this one was along the side. So we want to get that properly placed and aligned. 
So I'm going to look at this from the side again. Let's take a look at the other side. I'm going to hit R, Y. I'm going to rotate this about like so. I'm going to bring it up just like so. From the top down, we're just going to move that into place about like so. That looks good. Almost perfectly aligned. And to get my perfect alignment, RX, I'm just going to rotate that about like that. And I'm going to move it up just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now, I have to do that again for the opposite side, but I'm going to show you this neat little trick. Okay, so what I need to do now is duplicate these two heads onto the opposite side of this particular model. To do so is very, very easy. I am going to select both of these. I am going to hit center of origin to or set the origin to the 3D cursor, which is the middle. I'm going to hit Shift D, then press Enter. And now I have a duplicate pair. Without doing anything else, I'm going to hit RZ180. And now I press the Tab key or the Enter key, and we are done. I have two new heads duplicated on the opposite sides. With that being done, I can go ahead and union these to our ring shank. So if we look from the side, I've got them here. If we look from the opposite side, you can see them over there. If I look from the front or the back, everything is in place. <clears throat> Let's get rid of this marquee diamond. We are not going to need it right this second. So I'm going to go ahead and hide it. And I'm going to bring in a frame for our head. So this is pretty simple to do. We're going to hit Shift A and we are going to add in a cube. Now, every head, or at least a peg set head, has a hole in it. So I'm going to size this cube down and I'm going to make a bar across the top frame of our ring shank. So with that bar selected, if I look from the side here, I'm just going to bring that up just so it's about in the middle of our ring. I'm going to hit S, Y, and I'm going to make that as wide as half of the ring shank. So it takes up about half the space into each side of the ring shank on either side. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And now I'm going to press control R to add in a bunch of loop cuts. And I'm just going to add in a bunch of loop cuts until I'm happy with those right there. Press the mouse button twice and that makes them permanent. With that done, I'm going to grab my edge loop tool right here. And I'm going to grab the center loop. I'm going to hit shift alt and grab the one above it. So now I've got that whole row or that entire loop selected. I come over to proportional editing, zoom out, I'm going to hit S and then X, and I'm going to make this just a little bit of a round shape inside of our frame. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a moment. With that done, I'm also going to bring that up just a little bit so we give ourselves a little bit of a bump up, just about like so. I'm going to go back into object mode, hit S, Z, and just make this a little bit narrower, right about like so. One more thing to do, hit Shift A to add in a new mesh. We're going to add in a cylinder. I'm going to drag that all the way up to the top. I'm going to hit S, Z to make it a little bit longer, and then we're going to size it down just about like so. And what I'm hoping for here is to get to about maybe... 0.7 millimeters so let's drop that down about like so that looks good we'll leave it at one and now what I want to do is make the hole for our peg set head so with that selected hold the shift key down select this frame across the top of the ring let's go over to our edit tool and then do a difference now we've got a hole in the frame with the frame selected hold the shift key down select your ring shank and then do a union and now I've got a ring that is in all one solid piece. And we have a nice frame in the top for a, for a head. Let's go back into object mode. And let's just give this a texture so we can see what it looks like. And again, I'll select platinum. Okay, so there's what our ring looks like so far. Okay, in post printing and casting, you will have to dig out this little section 
of that, but you can do it if you want uh, in Blender. It's very simple. Um, we could just kind of use a cutout tool here and do a cutter to place uh, a nice deep cut or groove into that little section there if we want. Okay, we're almost done with this ring. The next thing we want to do is just grab a head. Now normally you wouldn't have an attached head or a molded head into a ring. Sometimes you just use a peg set head. So what I'm going to do is just for tutorial purposes, I'm just going to come over to my Blender Gems library. You can get this from my website. Uh, it is available for purchase on my website. I'm going to grab in, uh, let's see, heads. We have a nice round head somewhere down here. We just want a cheap basket head. We want a simple round head for this. Four prongs. Let's see what I've got here. This looks pretty good. I'll just use that one. Let's append it. And let's hit Control A. We'll just align the transformation just because. I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to size that down right about there. Let's get our round diamond and make that visible again so we can see where it's got to go. Let's grab that, bring it up to the top. Now I'm going to hit size shift Z so I'm only sizing it along all axes except for the height right about like that let's give this head some texture we'll make this platinum also and there you have it that's how I would design this particular ring I think if I were going to make this particular design a little bit better I would probably increase the size of my marquee frame it does look a little bit on the thin side so I would probably redesign that just to have that done but you can see that is the entire process from start to finish on making this particular model guys I hope you like this video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber consider subscribing and if you want to get notified every time I upload a video which is usually uh, at least twice a week lately um, hit that little bell and you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video thanks for watching guys and hey thank you for all the YouTube support and questions that you guys give me it does help me come up with some new ideas for videos and I do appreciate it please let me know in the comments section below what you think about these videos and if you want to see anything else take care guys